Here's a brutal truth. The gap between businesses using AI automations and traditional ones is not just growing, it's accelerating. Your competitors are already responding to leads much faster, scaling without hiring, and they literally can go to sleep while AI agents do tasks for them. They're not smarter than you, they're not more technically skilled than you, and they don't have bigger budgets than you. They just discovered that nowadays, building AI agents is so easy, you will need nothing but plain English to automate your daily repetitive tasks. I'm about to show you how to build an AI agent under five minutes using one of the top automation platforms called Lindy. Let's go. So first, quick context. What is Lindy? Lindy is a no-code platform that lets anyone, and I mean anyone, build AI agents. Last August, Lindy received a major update called Lindy 3.0 with two major features. First, Agent Builder, which lets you build AI agents by chatting with Lindy. The second is called Autopilot, which basically give access for your AI agents to a computer in the cloud 24 seven. It can navigate websites and apps like a human would do. Enough talking, let me show you. Here I am at the home screen of Lindy after signing up. I want to build an email management agent that analyze my inbox and even identify real urgent emails. Not the spammy emails, not the commercial communications emails, truly urgent emails. And then draft a reply and save it in my drafts box. That's it. Pretty easy. I go here to the top right, click on new agent. And either I have to enter a prompt or select one of the templates that Lindy suggests. This is one of the strengths of Lindy. It has a plenty of templates that you can straight away use, connect to your apps, fine tune the setting, and in no time you have a really functioning proven AI agent. I highly recommend here to check in the home screen the most popular template sections. You click here on see all and I'm 100% you will find at least two to three AI agents that you can use straight away. But to show you the power of Lindy, I'm going to build an AI agent from scratch. So back to the home screen. Again, I click in, on new agent and I click here on start from scratch. When you will reach the screen, on the right side you will see one of the most classic ways to build AI automations, which is the visual editor. Basically you will need to create each step, what we call nodes, and define the triggers, the conditions, the loops for each step. And it can get complex very quickly actually, and to be honest, it's not for everyone. However, the revolution that Lindy brings is the agent builder on the left side of the screen. Here you can see that you can just, by chatting with Lindy AI, you can build the, re the agent that you need. So here we will ask it to create the email management agent that we talked about earlier. So here create an agent that monitors my emails, identify which, are, which one are actually urgent and not just marketing spam and drafts intelligence a contextual reply for the truly urgent ones. I hit enter, and now it start th thinking about how to build this agent. As you can see, Lindy is using a reasoning model. And here it's asking me very good, question about, uh, very good questions about my agent. It's asking me what, which email provider I'm using, what urgent mean for me, and then the reply of preferences, if my agent will be able to just draft replies or automatically send replies or send replies automatically without my approval. Okay, this is critical for my agent to be functioning. I will respond to each of this, the questions. I will tell it that I'm using Gmail. I want the AI to determine the urgency of the email by the context and just create a draft and save it. Don't do anything like sending or asking me for confirmation. Of course, you might ask me why you don't ask Lindy to build an agent that sends emails directly. And here I have 
a strong recommendation for you, especially if you're starting with AI agents, always play it safe. Always avoid irreversible actions at least for three weeks to one month after creating your agent because you will face corner cases when you deploy your AI agent, you're not sure about the quality of responses it will generate. For example, here, if you're sending emails to customers or your team or your management, surely you want to avoid embarrassing situations where you have irrelevant content in your email or rubbish content. After, for example, one month, if your AI agent drafted and saved qualitative replies in your drafts inbox and you're happy with that, you can proceed then to the sending step and you can get back to the agent builder and change from saving drafts to sending actual emails. This is applies to all agents, whatever the context of what you're trying to accomplish. Here I reply to the three questions. Now it have all the information required to build the agent and it's asked me to confirm that's the workflow of my agent. So my agent first need to analyze a new email when it's received, if it decide if it's urgent or not, and then draft a reply. Perfect. Yes, that's what I absolutely I will say yes. So now it has all the elements to build the agent and it start the actual building. Less than a minute later, it finished building the agent and it's suggesting for me to run a test. So I click here, run test. I, as you can see, my visual editor has been updated and now I have the three steps of my AI agent defined. I have the step of receiving the email and here the second step of analyzing if it's urgent or not. And the last step is to create and draft the reply. That's look perfect and neat. So let me click on each step to set up all the parameters for the step. For example, here, the first step, of course, I need to define my Gmail address here. I'm using a testing Gmail address, and then you can select all the triggers. And actually this is very important because Lindy use credits. So, each time your runs tasks, it will consume credits. To have a cost-effective agent, you need to narrow down the emails that it will analyze to the minimum necessary. For example, nowadays, everybody receives tons of spam and commercial communication. So if your agent will be analyzing that, it will analyze that and, of course, understand that they are not urgent emails. However, it will consume a lot of credits. And then, of course, the real urgent emails, they are definitely fewer than the spams and the commercial communic communication. So your agent will not be cost effective and it would cost you a lot. If you narrow the list of email that your agent will be analyzing to some domains, to some companies, to some people, much more cost effective. Okay, here we will, for the sake of the demo, we will not touch that, but this is actually very important. The second step is the analysis step. Here, the agent builder defined Claude for Sonnet as the model to be used for analyzing this, the emails and deciding if it's urgent or not. The agent builder write a prompt for Claude for Sonnet so it asked it to consider the factors to define if this email is urgent or not. And actually I can change the model I'm using. For example, here I can change to ChatGPT, I can change to Gemini. Basically all the Frontiers models are here. However, you need to understand that the smarter and the more powerful model you're using, the more credits you consume. You need to choose a model adapted to the tasks you're setting up. For example, the task of analyzing emails, I think Claude for Sonnet is perfect choice. This model is robust and very smart, and it's not the, the strongest and the most credit consuming model. If I go, for example, for all three here, it will be definitely more expensive. So it depends on the complexity of the task, if there, the task is very simple, very basic, you need to go for the cheapest model and the fastest model. 
very important to have a cost effective agent. Okay, and also here you can edit the prompt so you can add and customize all what you need to have, let's say, a more specific decision making regarding your context. You can add the context of your business, of your company, of the brands that you're, you're managing. You can edit and write whatever useful information you think here. Last step is drafting the reply. Again, you can choose the model, the large language model you prefer for this step. Cloud for Sonnet is excellent at writing. I will keep Cloud for Sonnet, but if you like another model, of course, you can choose here from the list. Again, you need to think about cost effectiveness for your agent. Then you can set up some parameter like who can be in CC of this email, the subject, you hear, for example, the agent builder asks Claude to create an appropriate subject line for replying to the original email. For the body of the email, the prompt is create a professional and contextual reply to this urgent email. And of course, you can edit this and customize it and adapt it to your context, to your brand, to your company. This is really helpful and will help you save times with the, the replies that you will get. Because if you have a very broad and general prompt like this one, definitely the drafted replies will be broad and general. And the more specific is your prompt, the more specific the replies you will get. And if, for example, you're not happy with the replies or it makes consistently some mistakes, you can get back here and then fix that. And for example, ask Claude to fix that. Or even if you have some issue with your agent, you can get back here with the agent builder chat and tell the agent builder that I'm facing X, Y, Z problems and how to fix them. And it will guide you really in a very efficient way how to fix that problem. And that's it. Our agent is now is ready. So let's test it for real. I will be writing an email here I'm at my Gmail account. I will be sending an email to my Gmail address I defined in my AI agent. This is about a last minute invitation for AI Tool Summit in Austin, Texas. Here the sender said that a speaker just canceled and they are looking for a replacement. He gave me the details about the event, like the day, the time, the day the duration of the presentation, the expected audience, but more importantly, in the last sentence, he said, need confirmation by tomorrow noon as we are updating the schedule. Here, obviously, this email is urgent. However, I didn't use keywords like urgent or deadline or something similar, and I did that in purpose because I want the AI to check if the AI understood the context of the email, which is obviously urgent email is ready so I click on send here my testing Gmail address account the email was well received the email I just received I just sent however you can see there is no drafts and that's normal I will go back to Lindy so in Lindy you can see that my agent detected I, I'm in the test mode Lindy already detected that email was received so I will click on select and here it will run the agent on that email. Okay, here it says that the condition is met, that the email is urgent, perfect. And it drafted a reply. Here the reply it drafted. Okay, perfect. Let me check my Gmail drafts box to see if that was really done. And as you can see, now I have one new draft and it's here, so, I will click on it. Here are the draft written by my AI agent. Thank you for reaching about for reaching out about the speaking opportunity at the AI Tools Summit. I appreciate your thinking of me for this session. I like the tone, actually pretty professional yet warm. I would be delighted to present on practical AI automation for small businesses at your virtual summit. Okay, you see this is actually good of course this email needs some customization and tweaking 
However, it's really professional and relevant to the context of the email received. So my agent is working, as I told you, this is the base, but you can fine tune it as much as you want and as much as you need. So you intervene the less, less and less, and you will be at one time comfortable that your AI agent sends the email. However, there is this, as I told you, the one month tweaking phase where you will get back to your agent builder and try to fine tune the settings to cover all the corner cases and improve the quality of replies and make them more specific to your context. Now let's talk about pricing. The good news, Lindy has a free plan with 400 credits per month that let you test the platform and see what is capable of doing. But for serious automations, you need to sign up for a paying plan starting at 50 bucks per month for 5,000 credits and you get seven free trial periods. Actually, I highly recommend you try Lindy and try to automate a basic repetitive daily tasks and see what is capable of. For example, as I told you, use Agent Builder and you will be amazed and surprised, especially if you're new to AI automations and AI agents. So that was Agent Builder. You don't have any excuse now to not start building AI agents that automate daily repetitive tasks. Actually, it's so easy. You just want to express what you want to accomplish. And then if you face problems or corner cases, you can get back to Agent Builder and ask it to fix the problems. Lindy 3.0 came also with a second major feature called Autopilot, which actually give access to your AI agents to cloud computers 24-7. For example, if you want to gather the pricing of your competitors, you can ask your AI agent to go to all the websites of all your competitors, extract the pricing information for each item or service, create an Excel sheet with the data, and then create an analysis report comparing these pricing to your own pricing. So powerful. Thanks for watching this deep dive into Lindy. If this opened your eyes to what's possible with AI automations, please smash that like button and subscribe for more game-changing AI tools reviews. By the way, check our website maxproductive.ai where you will find an AI tools directory across eight categories with pro and cons, features, pricing for each tool. Links are in the description. If you have tested Lindy, please let me know in the comment section how was your experience. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.